Go to the end to see a 360 degree view of the hike and all the peaks in the area. The background sound is actually a little stream flowing under some ice on the hike. On the morning of Saturday, October 3rd, 2009, I left the house at 4.45 with my 29-year-old son Garrett to hike peaks in the Latir Wilderness area in northern New Mexico. We had Plan A and Plan B. We attempted to go into private land, the Rio Castilla Co-op Livestock Association, and camp for a fee, yet we were too late in the year. This opportunity is only available in the summer. We went for Plan B, which was to camp at Cabresto Lake, northeast of Cuesta, New Mexico. The final road into the lake is three or four mile four-wheel drive road. We usually backpack, but this time we decided to do drive-in camping. We brought a big tent and lots of equipment. It felt funny after ultralight backpacking. We set up camp and hiked around the beautiful lake. Garrett forgot his fishing equipment, so he improvised with some string and hooks he found. He fished, got some bites, but did not catch anything. We had a little chipmunk visitor around camp. For dinner, Garrett cooked roast and veggies in Dutch oven over the coals, then cherry copper dessert in the same Dutch oven. Wow, it was excellent. The morning of October 4th, we set out thinking we would hike four at most maybe six peaks. I had a 12-pound pack, including some water, food, and emergency gear. Our starting elevation was 9,200 feet. The temperature was about 40 degrees. Aspen in the area were turning golden. It, the day before, it was perfectly clear as we hiked. We could see the mountain peaks were covered with clouds. We left camp at 8 a.m. after having just coffee and followed the canyon that fed the lake. After a short distance, we entered the Latir Peak Wilderness area. Several miles up, we turned onto Bull Creek Trail and headed to Ridge Line. It was a fairly easy ascent. We reached the Ridge Line at about noon after hiking 4.6 miles. A month ago, all the high alpine grasses would have been green and loaded with alpine wildflowers. Now being so late in the season, the grasses were golden. I took a beautiful picture of a blue bird with full wing spread. The clouds had now mostly cleared out. The first peak we planned to hike was Bendado Peak. I decided to hike the ridge line and do Peak 12550. This is listed as an unmarked peak in the book Mountains of New Mexico by Mike Butterfield. I then did another unlisted peak very close by. It was 12,500 feet, small rock that you scrambled up. I then headed towards Dajo Peak and arrived there at 145 after traveling seven miles. The elevation of Dajo Peak is 12,734 feet. The views were beautiful. We debated doing Vera Silva Peak but decided to do that another time. We descended the mountain and headed towards Cabresto. It was a fairly easy hike. We arrived there at 3.20 after hiking 8.9 miles. The elevation was 12,448 feet. We took pictures, admired the views, made a few phone calls to loved ones. The phones only work on mountaintops. I decided to hustle ahead of Garrett and try to get an extra peak. Garrett's knees were bothering him, so he planned to do just one more. I headed towards Bull Creek Peak. I was full of energy until I came to this peak. It was a real strain going down and then going up, then going down, then going up to catch Garrett. I really felt burning legs and all. As I hiked up to Bull Creek, I saw four big horn sheep. I got some good pictures of them. I arrived at Bull Creek at 420. After hiking 10 miles, the elevation was 12,170 feet. By the time I caught up to Garrett on the top of Peak 12456, which is called Cabresto Sueste, it was 510. 
I'd hiked 11 miles. We had scouted a shortcut back to the lake. We planned to follow the ridge line mostly due south to the lake. Our GPS said that it was 1.7 miles as the crow flies. The plan was to follow the ridge line to the lake in our camp. It was a very rocky, jagged ridge line. It was not dangerous but difficult to cross. We had to maneuver along loose rocks and a difficult ridge. When we made it back to tree line, it was no less easy. The law to cross twisting in and out of the woods as it was getting progressively darker. We knew that we were going to get caught coming back to camp in the dark. With all the logs and twisting and turning in the twilight, it was very hard on Garrett's knees. Towards the end of the hike, as the almost full moon was coming up, we pulled out our flashlights and made it the rest of the way back to camp. Part of my emergency gear were little flashlights. When we left in the morning, we had no idea we'd be coming back in the dark. The older I get, the more my old Boy Scout motto means to me, be prepared. It would have been extremely difficult if we did not have flashlights, and this was the first time we were caught in the dark. We had hiked about 12 miles in 11 hours and 45 minutes. Our total up-down elevation gain was over a mile, 5,783 feet. I was tired, but I had to hike down to the lake to pump water. When I returned, Garrett had the campfire going. We got the coals red hot and cooked T-bone steaks. The next morning, we packed up, had sausage and eggs, and left camp at 8.30 a.m. for a a three-and-a-half-hour drive home. We made our way back in the darkness, but the true light of the darkness. Surprise!